Hey guys, tis Danny and today we're gonna do an unboxing. Wait, what an unboxing in January? Yes, Danny, are you crazy? Kinda. So let me tell you the story with this one. I saw it on eBay at Catacetum 2. I needed to get it because I was on the lookout for this one for the longest time. It's actually a new hybrid that I've never owned before and I, I just uh, had to risk it. You never actually order or transport orchids in winter because there is a high chance they will freeze along the way. Nobody heats their deposits. So today we will find out if my orchid is still alive. We're starting good though. As you can see, Catacetum 2 put some polystyrene here, which is meant to maintain a barrier between the temperature outside and the temperature inside this box. Oh wow, that is really nice. I am actually really impressed. No matter if this orchid is alive or not, he tried. I appreciate that. Fingers crossed, it's still fine. I'm not worried about the climate here. It's kind of still nice. I'm worried about the rest of Europe. It's coming from Poland, so it's uh, not very warm there. And I can already hear the medium jiggling around. And here's the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm going to do the unboxing, on papering actually first, and then we're gonna talk about it, what it is, why it is. Uh, so yeah, okay, you guys, fingers crossed. I'm so nervous. You should really, really not order orchids in winter. Oh. oh, I forgot to mention this orchid should have a flower spike, whether it's alive or not. Okay, I think she's okay, you guys. Well, the medium is all over the place, but we already know how things go. And I'm not sure if you are actually seeing what I'm doing here. There you go, I think that's better. Okay. Hey, I think she's okay. I think this is a little bit of damage. Her leaves are very cold, I have to say. But to be quite honest, I don't see anything extremely, extremely bad. Alrighty, there she is. I am not expecting the medium to be in any good shape. I can just do this and we're done with the medium, just so, just so we know where we stand. Since we're here, we're gonna check out the root system, but before we do that, let me put on some gloves because I'm getting the hibijibis. Oh, much, much better. Little side note, you guys, two things. I have extremely, extremely dry skin to the point of being alarmed sometimes, and I'm not helping myself by washing my hands a little bit too much. I'm a little bit of a germaphobe, and the water here is not friendly with my hands at all, so wearing gloves is a lifesaver, and I'm telling you, once you get adjusted to them, you do everything with them. I am preparing food um, with them, you know, when it's raw. No more food under my fingernails. No more excessive cracked skin. It's uh, really good, actually. Oh, righty, back to the orchid. What am I holding here? This is a Renanthopsis Mildred Jameson, and you will have a picture on the screen. Yes, it is a Renanthera hybrid. But guess what type of hybrid? It is hybridized with a Phalaenopsis. It is these two RT actually. So if you ever wondered what would happen if you crossed a Phalaenopsis with a Vendacious type of orchid with the Renanthera, this is what happens. <laughs> there we go. And this orchid also has a flower spike. I just had to have it when I saw it for sale. Root system is okay-ish, not the best, but that's okay. I have enough root system to hydrate this orchid, to maintain it. We already have two spent flower spikes, so we know that this orchid has bloomed before. She's not at her first blooming. And she's looking quite okay. She does have these spots on the leaves, which I don't remember seeing on the picture, but I will have to take a closer look at them. They might just be the cold damage, maybe. That's okay though, it doesn't appear to be very, very stressed from the cold, so that's okay. Now, why this orchid? Well, I have a thing with Renantheras. About a million years ago in the Permian era, <laughs> anyway, a lot of time ago, I purchased myself my first Renanthera. It was the Monachica. This orchid that I ordered today is a hybrid of the Monachica, by the way, because I love the Monachica. And some people would pronounce it as Monachica. I have no idea. To me, it sounds good, Monachica. So I purchased that orchid, which I still have. It has never ever done great for me. If I remember correctly, I did pot it in that really awful medium, which was not sterilized. That's what I suppose 
it managed to really damage a lot of my orchids, including that Renanthera. She never actually went overboard, but she doesn't look all that great. She appears to constantly struggle and have some fungal issues, and in the end, I don't really know if uh, she's a healthy individual or not. But anyway, ever since then I kept trying with Renantheras. I do have the Philippinensis as well, but I had some bad luck with that one as well, with the spider mite infestation, which I took care of. Hopefully she will do okay from now. I do have another uh, Renanthera, which I received and I really, really like. I have a Renanthera hybrid, the Kagawara, that I purchased from Ana Maria, but she's recuperating. I didn't receive her in very good condition. She just started to grow larger and larger leaves. Anyway, all of these orchids I really, really like, I really wanted to have, never saw one in bloom, uh, never had the luck to have a really, really good life with one. And of course, now we reach to this one, the Renanthopsis, which is the love child of the Renanthera monarchica and Phalaenopsis duartiana. And I'm thinking, well, maybe this one is easier to keep. Maybe because it has that Phalaenopsis gene pool in it, maybe I will have some luck with it as well. That's why I purchased it. But have you seen the flowers? The flowers are really, really pretty as well. They look more like the Renanthera to me than the Phalaenopsis, which is good. And as far as I know, it can produce a lot, a lot, a ton of flowers on a flower spike. Regarding fragrance, I'm not sure. I don't think she's fragrant, but I just wanted her because of the flowers, because of the colors, how they look like, not the fragrance necessarily. And that's why I purchased it and thank goodness, she doesn't look all that bad. I do suspect she did suffer a little bit. What you see here, the redness, that's not coal damage. It used to have it. These orchids do have a tinge of purple. It's coming from the uh, Monahica. My Monahica has them as well. It is a sign of high light. So I will try to maintain this orchid in high light. Fingers crossed that this flower spike will continue to grow. And even if I'm not gonna have a great show, I do just wanna see those flowers. And of course, I'll keep you up to date. So here is my Renanthera monahica. You can see the spotting on the leaves. At some point it had a bad infestation of spider mites. We took care of that, but I think it transmitted the orchid flag virus. The newest leaf, as you can see, is not looking all that pretty. I was hoping the damage would go away, but it hasn't. She doesn't have spider mites now, but she obviously has something else. She had another leaf here, which fell. Overall, even though this orchid did produce Oh wow, yeah, she anchored herself really well. She produced roots, even though she grows, something's wrong with it, and I'm not entirely sure what. For four years already, I keep having issues with this orchid, I keep having weird looking leaves, and I think it is time this year to just say goodbye to this orchid because she is clearly diseased. She never bloomed in four years, although I purchased it as a near flowering size or something of the sorts. These orchids don't grow very, very big. They can grow tall, but not big. So she was capable to bloom. She just didn't in four years. So I have to come to terms with the fact that Hmm, this might have serious issues and I might never actually have a vigorous orchid, an orchid that can bloom to her full potential or bloom at all. So I think this year I'm gonna say goodbye to her and I'm going to look out for a new Monachica on the market. It's, it's too much. It's just, she grows very slow. She looks diseased and most probably is diseased and that's that. Just one of those things. The other Renantheras that I have are looking spectacular, so no worries. It's just this one, and sadly, sometimes you need to let them go. So if you can believe it, that was one of the parents of this orchid, and you can see the differences. This orchid clearly looks a little bit more like a Phalaenopsis, uh, but it doesn't have those fleshy, thick leaves. The Stuartiana is actually a Phalaenopsis with mottled leaves, and I did have her in the past, or at least a hybrid of her. I don't think she was a pure Stuartiana, the white variety, and she was really pretty, lost her to spider mites or I gave her away, I really don't remember. Part of my fells were given to other people, part of them were attacked by spider mites. Even if I gave them to other people, those people had some issues with spider mites as well. It was a full fiasco. I did not feel very well afterwards because I gifted somebody a sick orchid. Eh. But yeah, I learned a lot since then. So these are the two parents of the orchid and we'll see how she blooms. I'm gonna go hydrate her and we'll keep you obviously up to date. Thank 
thank you so much for watching remember it's always super risky to transport orchids in january february well the winter months here in uh, the northern hemisphere at least so be very careful with that and if you have the chance to wait up until springtime comes do so right you guys thank you for watching you know the drill if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video and with that said i'll see you all next time bye Alrighty, quickly before I let you go, about the video outro that I made two days ago. You guys are just so sweet and I was just so overwhelmed with your messages, but please don't be worried. We'll figure it out, everything will be okay, you don't have to do anything. Um, I'm thinking about possible solutions so that we can keep doing this at the level and speed we're doing it. I will try to find a way to make things as similar, if not, then that is that, but we're not there yet, please don't worry. Thank Thank you guys so so much but you don't have to do anything please everything is okay and thank you so much for supporting me in general so i will not talk about it anymore if the time comes for a change i will of course let you know and i will do my best to remain the same but we'll see if we ever get there thank you all so much that was the bottom line i do appreciate everything and i'll see you all next time bye